What's up guys, Cody with Rattlesnake Ranch. In today's video, we are going to talk about our pygmy rattlesnakes. Welcome to the channel if you're new here. Today's video is inspired by one of our viewers who simply asked us, hey, will you make a video about pygmy rattlesnakes? This person has an interest in pygmy rattlesnakes, how we keep them, how we breed them. So this video is for you, you know who you are, and we're gonna talk all about that. All right, let's talk about pygmy rattlesnakes. Got one of them right here. Uh, these guys are in the genus Asturus. So rattlesnakes are really just two different genera. We got Crotalus, which is the vast majority of rattlesnakes. And then we've got just a handful of rattlesnakes that are in the genus Asturus, which is our pygmy rattlesnakes, as well as our Mossasaga. And uh, they're a much smaller species of rattlesnake. They don't get very big, a um, couple feet, usually less. And uh, yeah, really cool rattlesnakes. Uh, we love them. We've got two out of the three subspecies of pygmy rattlesnakes here. So this little red guy I'm looking at right here, this is Cisturus miliarius miliarius. I'll put that on the screen so you know what I just said there. And that's the Carolina pygmy rattlesnake. Now there is a certain area that has the red variety, which we have here, but the Carolina pygmy rattlesnakes, not all of them are red, but there are some red ones. There's also miliarius streckeri, which is the Western pygmy rattlesnake. We do not have any of those yet. We would love to work with some locality streckeri. Eventually we will, but um, we do not have those here yet. And then lastly, we have the dusky pygmy rattlesnake, which are predominantly in Florida. Really cool snakes, I love these. I would argue they're relatively easy to keep. Um, again, we don't necessarily promote keeping here, but for those of you that already do, you're in a state where it's legal. Um, for the sake of the viewer who is interested, we're gonna cover how we keep these guys. All right, so first off, I'm gonna talk about housing. So if you've been following our channel and watching other videos, You'll see everything here is set up in custom PVC enclosures. They are made by uh, my good friend Elazar Macias. His business is 5150 Reptile Cribs and Things. So these guys are specifically in 42 inches long by two feet deep by one foot tall exhibits. And again, this is a small species. That's actually a pretty spacious exhibit for them. Um, they utilize all parts of it. We've got our cool hides on the right side of every cage. The left side is a nice warm, uh, warm hide, so that hide has a piece of belly heat, so heat tape that's regulated by a herpstat thermostat. And uh, we've got that set, I think at 85-ish degrees, pretty much keeps that side about 85 degrees. And uh, they also have a basking light that comes on for a couple hours a day. Uh, it's actually on right now. And that just gives them some additional, you know, peak heat at certain times of the day. And it's a different option where they can, you know, bask under it if they choose to. So plenty of heat options. I'd say when the basking light is on combined with that heat tape underneath, um, they can have an option for a couple hours a day that's close to 90 degrees. Whereas the cool side is probably closer to the high 70s, low 80s. And um, I do let things drop at nighttime. We let this whole building cool off at night sometimes, depending on the time of year. So a little bit of minor temperature fluctuations, but those are the numbers there. Now, as far as humidity goes, this is a species that does come from an area that is a little more humid, or I should say a lot more humid actually, than a lot of the other rattlesnakes that we keep. Most of the crotalus that we keep in here, we keep pretty dang dry with a full water bowl all the time. These guys also have a full water bowl all the time. But as far as the cage goes, we do soak the bedding uh, kind of throughout the year randomly, especially if it's raining outside, we'll go ahead and give them a little soak in here. I always let the bedding completely dry out before I wet it again. And this just gives them nice little humidity spikes throughout the year as if it was, you know, rainfall where they naturally come from. And uh, yeah, they seem to like it and it's good for them. And it does seem to stimulate some breeding behavior too. And we'll get into breeding a little in a little bit. Now the bedding that we actually use for these, uh, it's kind of a mixture of a few different things. We use a couple commercially available reptile beddings. So the cypress mulch, I think is called uh, forest floor, which is again, cypress mulch. We'll mix that with some repti soil. And I will also mix in some crushed up leaf litter and some kind of shredded up and cut up uh, moss as well. And so that makes a nice kind of uh, bedding 
seems to look more naturalistic when you use a mixture of things versus all one type. All one type tends to look a little fake in my opinion, but anyway, that's what we use for bedding. Um, I did let go some springtails in there just to kind of keep mold down if that ever became an issue. But again, our climate out here, things are so bone dry. These dry out pretty quick in, in between waterings. Haven't had any issues with that really. All right, so I'm gonna take you guys off my stand here. We're gonna take a look at a couple of these up close. So here is our red Carolina pygmy rattlesnakes. These guys are awesome. Um, the lighting is not doing it justice right now. These guys do have a pretty vibrant red coloration, especially if you take them out in the sun. And uh, we've got a pair in here. They have produced for us a couple times. And that is the boy back there cruising around. And this is the young lady who's who was actually double clutched for us before, believe it or not. She had a litter, um, I think it was in May, and then she had another litter that same year in December. We were working on publishing that actually. And that's actually the second pair of rattlesnakes to do that for us. So there's those guys. And then uh, again, no striker eye yet. Can't wait to have some, but we don't have any yet. Uh, moving down though, we have our dusky pygmy rattlesnakes. And uh, thankfully one of them is out right now. This is a little young male. Just chilling in his plants right now. And uh, you can kind of see how we have these guys set up. There is a female in here as well. Oh, she actually is out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see her. She is under those leaves. You can just see the edge of her under the fake leaves there. Yeah, she's hanging out in the warm side. Kind of fun fact about the uh, dusky pygmy rattlesnake, there is a drug called eptifibatide, and the brand name is Integralin. It is actually a blood thinner, and it was made after discovering some useful compounds in this species or subspecies of rattlesnakes, venom. So venom is often thought of as a pretty, you know, deadly thing and in reality it can also be life-giving so thank you guys for integralin a couple other things worth mentioning um, as far as ventilation goes there are three three four inch vents across the back of the uh, cages so kind of you know spread out evenly can't see them but there's some little one inch vents across the front too um, right above the glass here not within reach but right behind the top so that seems to be plenty of airflow for these guys. And uh, again, we don't let it get too stuffy. That's why I let it dry out between waterings. Some of our other like montane rattlesnakes like things a little cooler, a little higher airflow. We'll install actual little computer fans, but these guys don't have that. Um, we'll mention, as you can see, we've got some you know artificial plants in there just to make it look a little nice, create some hiding spots. So thanks Hobby Lobby for the artificial plants. There's some mossy sticks, again, some leaf litter, and their water bowls, which I use these for all the rattlesnakes here too. Good, easy to clean water bowls that also double as hides for some of the smaller species. So these guys, um, unlike most of the other rattlesnakes I have in here, do actually fit underneath these water bowls and we'll utilize them as a hide sometimes. I don't know how, I don't know if you guys can tell, but yeah, these guys are pretty small. This is an adult pair. They have produced uh, two litters of babies for us and uh, the babies are really tiny. Speaking of which, uh, we've got two that we have held back and let's go take a look at them in our back room. All right, before I pull these two guys out of the hatchling rack, uh, pygmy rattlesnakes, when they are born, kind of like our sidewinders, uh, they're even smaller, they're real tiny. Uh, I'm gonna really quickly put up a, a picture that I'm proud of where we got a photo of one right next to a quarter just to give you an idea of how little these babies are. And uh, yeah, makes it a pain to feed them because even a day old pinky mouse is a little big for them. All right, so here's a little pair of babies that we've got in our back room. Uh, this one is actually in shed, kind of hard to tell, but it's pretty opaque. Um, this one probably isn't too far off, but yeah, it's, it's not in shed, so a little brighter. These are gorgeous snakes. I love these so much. And I will say these have been the most challenging babies for us to get going. I have never had to force feed a rattlesnake for so long. 
until they finally got with the program. And yeah, this, this species gave me a run for my money. This subspecies, I should say. Our duskies were pretty dang easy. These guys were not. Um, both of these took me, geez, I think it was six months before they finally took their first meal. Yeah, pain in the butt. But once they got going, now they are bulletproof. All right, so this viewer did inquire about breeding pygmy rattlesnakes. And so I'll just kind of briefly go into the need to knows about how we get these guys to reproduce. And to be honest, it's just like a lot of our other crotalists. So all of our temperate rattlesnakes, so the you know United States, like North American species, you know, we get cold winters up here, especially in the northernmost states, but uh, even places like Florida, South Carolina, you get cold winters. These guys do come from a little bit milder climate, but um, they do experience, you know, winter cool downs. And so we mimic that by putting these guys in our hibernaculum outbuildings. We have a special building here. It's a walk-in cooler, essentially. And uh, we did a video about that a few years ago. Uh, Ian, when he was still doing our channel, um, helped us put one together for that. So go back and watch that. We're gonna plan on, we're planning on doing another video about that space because a lot of these guys will be going in there soon. But this is a building that we can control the temperature pretty much to a degree or two. So we'll put these guys in there for about two to three months and uh, they'll be at 50 to 55 degrees for that whole period. And uh, yep, they basically experience a, a, a artificial winter. We bring them back in here after March 1st and warm them up and then feed them generously once they kind of have some time to adjust. And then business as usual the rest of the year until about, you know, November, we'll stop giving them food, let them kind of clear their gut. And by December 1st, they're back in the hibernaculum. So that's our like annual system for a lot of these rattlesnakes. Um, the pygmies, again, a little bit milder climate though. So sometimes I'll do a two month, sometimes, um, sometimes I'll do no hibernation. So I did mention earlier, this pair of red pygmies produced two litters for us. And uh, one was in uh, May and the other litter was around Christmas time, which, you know, as I just said, we typically have them by December 1st in the hibernaculum. But this is where it's good to pay attention to your animals and what they're doing. So when it came time to hibernate everything in here, or brewmate, whatever you want to call it, I've got my own opinions on that word, but that's for another video. Um, this female looked gravid, and she was under her basking light on that warm hide day after day after day in late November. And so, you know, she clearly wanted to be warm. And so when it came time to actually put her in the hibernaculum, I realized, you know what? I don't think that's in her best interest. She very well may be gravid and is going to have babies soon. And I'm pretty sure if I had thrown her in there at a forced, you know, 50 to 55 degrees with no ability to warm up, um, good chance something could have happened where she could die, lose the babies, whatever. But being that she clearly wanted to be warm, I left her in here and I'm glad I did because we got a big litter of uh, beautiful little red pygmy rattlesnakes, including those two in the back you just saw. And uh, that was right around Christmas time. So a cool Christmas present for me, but yeah, pay attention to your animals, look at their patterns. Don't just kind of follow any specific formula. Obviously in nature, if they're too cold, they can try and do something about it. They can move out into the sun, or if they're too warm, they can move into the shade or underground or whatever. So um, again, not too formulaic watch your animals, but generally speaking, I would argue these guys need some amount of cooling down in the winter, followed by a warm up in spring, and then a good active season of feeding, and they should breed. They seem to breed and lock up spring to fall. I've seen locks at all different sorts of times of year, and uh, feed them generously after that, and usually the rest is good. As far as feeding these guys go, they pretty much predominantly get mice, and uh, already dead mice, um, if you haven't watched it already, go back and watch our Rat Shack video. All of our rodents come from there. We breed our own on site and that feeds our entire collection. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. For the viewer who was asking about our pygmy rattlesnakes, I hope I covered everything that you were hoping um, that I would. If not, feel free to reach out to me or you can comment below and I may be happy to go into more detail uh, if you are interested. But that's it for today. We love our pygmy rattlesnakes just like the rest of our rattlesnakes. We'll catch you guys next week. Again, if you're new to the channel, new video every Friday at five. We'll see you then.